In the second module of this program, we will discuss the pathophysiology of apnea of prematurity. Your learning objectives for this module are to understand the physiologic factors that control breathing in the preterm and term neonate, and the pathophysiologic mechanisms underlying apnea of prematurity. The transition from in utero to ex utero environments requires a rapid shift from intermittent fetal breathing activity that isn't associated with gas exchange to continuous breathing activities where gas exchange is essential. The transition from in utero to ex utero respirations and respiratory control is particularly difficult in a preterm infant. The preterm infant has unique challenges immature neuronal connections between the brain and lung, a highly compliant chest wall disadvantageous lung mechanics, and a neonatal respiratory control center that can be negatively impacted by a variety of pathophysiologic conditions. These conditions set up preterm infants to have frequent apneic events, which can lead to bradycardia and desaturations, a challenging problem in the NICU. The control of breathing in preterm and term neonates will be discussed in four parts. Each section will contain the control of breathing mechanism and a discussion of pathophysiology which leads to apnea in preterm neonates. The control of breathing in both the preterm and term neonate is immature in almost every single aspect of respiratory control. These aspects of respiratory control include chemosensitivity of both carbon dioxide and oxygen concentrations by peripheral chemoreceptors, responses by the central nervous system to those peripheral afferent inputs, an overriding inhibitory influence of central origin over the control of breathing, and laryngeal chemoreflexes. The response and actions of respiratory muscles is beyond the scope of this module. Carbon dioxide levels are sensed by chemoreceptors located peripherally in the carotid bodies near the carotid sinus and centrally at or near the ventral surface of the medulla oblongata in the brainstem. The carotid bodies are specialized cells that are in direct contact with arterial blood and communicate with afferent neurons that project to the respiratory control regions in the medulla. The primary stimulus for chemoreceptors is pH. The main cause of decreases in pH is an increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Central chemoreceptors are neurons in the medulla that respond directly to changes in hydrogen ion concentration in the cerebrospinal fluid. Hydrogen ions do not cross the blood-brain barrier, but carbon dioxide does. Carbon dioxide is converted to hydrogen ion and bicarbonate by carbonic anhydrase in the CSF. The increased hydrogen ions lower the pH, which is then sensed by chemoreceptors in the medulla. Carbon dioxide is the major chemical driver of respiration, even in the preterm infant. However, it is apparent that preterm infants display a decreased ventilatory response to CO2 concentration compared to more mature infants and adults. In preterm infants, an increase in carbon dioxide leads to an increase in tidal volume, but not an increase in the respiratory rate whereas an increase in carbon dioxide will cause an increase in both the tidal volume and the respiratory rate in older infants and adults. This increased tidal volume in preterm infants is associated with a prolonged expiratory duration, which appears to be mediated centrally at the brainstem level by the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA-aminobutyric acid, or GABA for short. Additionally, both term and preterm infants have a carbon dioxide apneic threshold that is slightly below the normal baseline partial pressure of carbon dioxide. This means that even brief periods of hyperventilation, which drives down the CO2 level, can trigger apneic episodes. The carotid bodies are also responsible for stimulating breathing in response to hypoxia. During fetal life, carotid bodies are adapted to the relative hypoxic in utero environment with partial pressures of arterial oxygen in the range of 23 to 30 millimeters of mercury. After birth, there is a four-fold increase in PaO2 and the carotid bodies are silenced initially. There is a gradual increase in hypoxic chemosensitivity over time. However, this sensitivity can be impacted in the setting of repeated episodes of hypoxia and hyperoxia, as can be seen in extremely preterm infants with, with respiratory failure or insufficiency or infants with BPD. This figure illustrates a proposed model showing the effects of hyperoxia and intermittent hypoxia on carotid body activity and subsequent effects on respiratory stability. 
Starting on the left side of the figure, the fetal and neonatal transition and the exposure to excessive supplemental oxygen can lead to episodes of postnatal hyperoxia, which causes decreased peripheral chemosensitivity and can prolong apneic events. On the right side of the figure, decreased respiratory drive and recurrent apnea causing intermittent hypoxia triggers peripheral chemosensitivity. Increased sensitivity can trigger hyperventilation, decreasing carbon dioxide concentrations, and then lead to apnea. All told, decreased peripheral chemosensitivity may prolong apnea, while increased peripheral sensitivity may precipitate apnea. In this figure, you can see the relationship between apnea and the ensuing bradycardia and desaturations. Apnea leads to a decrease in arterial oxygen and oxygen saturations. The bradycardia that occurs after apnea ensues is attributed to hypoxic stimulation of the carotid body chemoreceptors. Severe bradycardia can lead to decreased systolic and diastolic blood pressure, which is associated with decreased cerebral blood flow velocity. It is important to note that hypoxia does not precede episodes of apnea. Although supplemental oxygen is used for a variety of reasons in the NICU, it has no role for preventing apnea of prematurity in the absence of baseline hypoxemia. During exposure to hypoxia, neonates exhibit a biphasic ventilatory response, which consists of an initial increase in ventilation that lasts one to two minutes, followed by respiratory depression, often below baseline ventilatory status. This late decline is called hypoxic ventilatory depression. The initial increase in ventilation is believed to be caused by stimulation of the peripheral chemoreceptors. The later decrease in ventilation is caused by a decrease in breathing frequency with preservation of the tidal volume. Multiple inhibitory neurotransmitters, including dopamine, adenosine, GABA, and prostaglandins have been implicated in the pathophysiology of apnea of prematurity by disturbing breathing at both peripheral and central chemoreceptors. It is thought that these substances may be upregulated in early life and that chemoreceptors may possess enhanced sensitivity to these substances. For example, the role of adenosine in apnea of prematurity is suggested by the ability of methylxanthines and caffeine, which are nonspecific adenosine receptor inhibitors, to decrease the severity and incidence of apnea of prematurity. These inhibitory neurotransmitters may lead to an to inhibitory control of breathing in preterm infants and further impair carbon dioxide and oxygen responsivity in early postnatal life. Stimulation of the laryngeal mucosa causes inhibition of breathing and apnea and is mediated by the superior laryngeal nerve. This reflex-induced apnea is called the laryngeal chemoreflex and is associated with glottic closure, swallowing, bradycardia, and hypotension. The reflex, while protective of the lungs to prevent aspiration, can be exaggerated in preterm infants and lead to prolonged apnea. The mechanisms underlying this exaggerated response are unclear but seem to be related either to decreased central nervous system output or to the dominance of inhibitory neurotransmitters and pathways. In this module, we define the major control of breathing mechanisms in preterm and term neonates and the associated pathophysiology that leads to apnea of prematurity. This figure summarizes the major points touched on in this module. Immaturity of the brainstem and control of breathing leads to diminished responses in both hypercarbia and hypoxia, as well as exaggerated inhibitory responses to, st to stimulation of airway receptors. These immature reflexes and responses are responsible for apnea of prematurity. Please pause this recording and take a moment to look over this table provided by the AAP Committee on the Fetus and Newborn in its clinical report on apnea of prematurity published in 2016. This concludes Module 2. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.